Talk 100.3. Well, our next guest here on TSB has been producing or at least helping companies and individuals produce world-class content uh, for a number of years. He's got a great idea of the four Ps. We're going to get into that uh, very, very soon, but it's our pleasure uh, to join in the studio. Raj Kotesha from the Creative Content Agency. Thank you very much for joining us here on TSB. It's great to be here. It's great to have you in here. You've been running this business since, what, when, 2006, Creative Content Agency? 2006, yeah, we started it. I... I started it as a podcasting company so I was a little bit too yeah early that's quite early on that one so you can imagine what those pictures were like when I was going into companies telling them about building their brand through podcasting and and social media got laughed out of quite a few offices but stuck with it and then the iPhone was released and then the social network movie came out and it became very mainstream to produce content and uh, then the 2008 recession hit and brands that were spending lots of money or wasting a lot of money decided, hang on a second, we need a more efficient way to communicate. And all those factors combined spiked and led to an increase in content. And we were already there because my cousin Vic and I, who most people know, we, we were already going back and forth to New York and LA interviewing rappers. And we were like, hey, if we take me out and put a business person in and we take the rapper out and we put a Minister of Tourism for Egypt in that content's much more valuable to the to the business community. Because I was trying to talk to uh, trying to talk to Neil here. Oh, what do we talk to Raj about? Is it about his business? Is it his podcasting? <laughs> Is it my friends, your friends? You really do symbolise what it's like being an entrepreneur in Dubai. Where if there's an opportunity and you've got the right mindset and you've got a bit of go about you, you can find a solution for clients. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, um, I was I was looking at Neil and I was like, this is another handsome guy with a ponytail and a beard. I was like, I was like. Like actually, I could I could double my output by just having Neil show up in certain See? meetings. And for those, for the, if you squint, we're basically the same guy. So I think that could be a big opportunity. No, but absolutely, you know, that that comes from you know being a shopkeeper's son, forty two years old. So in the eighties and nineties, it was always constantly about serving you know different customers, building rapport, having that kind and of evolving like, quickly, being agile. Very much so. Yeah, I mean, the the first content I ever thought about making was like posters for the shop window mm. uh, in my dad's shop. And then you know when I went to university. I started promoting nights and becoming a DJ. So everything I'm learning at university about, you know, marketing and USPs and business is going immediately into my flyers. But the big shift is, of course, like when online video started to happen, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and that's what's caused a lot of a spike. And what I love about it more than anything is the fact that it doesn't matter whether you're trying to push your personal agenda or whether you're trying to push your business agenda, there's just a massive opportunity. No, you see, I, I love the way you know you're approaching content. Uh, you've been early in uh, the race. Uh, that's why you had the advantage. Uh, people now already know that. All right, so you know you guys are there doing it for them. But how much of uh, how, or as they say that you know how much is too much? You know where does the clutter begin? Because I want to be on Instagram. I want to be on TikTok. I want to be on LinkedIn. I want to be on Facebook. I want a podcast, YouTube, literally everywhere. But there has to be a time where I say, listen, no, this is where I limit myself or do I go no I don't want to limit myself the interesting thing there is firstly I'd want to clarify is how much is too much for you or for the audience uh, see, it could be both ways well let's answer both what's too much for the audience people think that no matter how much effort they put into their content whether it's a little bit or a lot it's going to be judged hmm. and people will be like okay this is too much content but what's what? happening is the reality is if you walk outside and you walk down the street or you walk into a cafe or a cinema or even sometimes when you're driving people are on their phones just flicking their thumbs from the yeah. bottom to the top so as much as you think it might be too much the audience decides what is too much and the thumb is a very interesting thing because for those of you who have ever seen listening out there uh, gladiator you know, the gladiator has a fight in the Colosseum and then there's thumbs up means live and a thumbs down means die. Well, I'm just putting my thumb up now behind the microphone. What's this on social media? It's, it's a like. It's a like. Sure. Yeah. So the audience decides. Now, how much is too much for you? I can promise you, when it comes to thinking about putting out too much content, you will surprise yourself mm -hmm. that if you put out a ton of content and you start making a lot of money, or attracting enough a lot of opportunities, you'll weirdly find space in your life to make more content. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you something. You know, uh, I was I was uh, talking to this friend of mine, and I was uh, preparing my uh, the year roundup reel, as they say, so so that it could go out right on the first of Jan, and you know, look back at what we've done. I scrolled on my Instagram feed, and I realized in the entire year I hadn't done too much on Instagram. 
on the gram i hadn't done too much in my personal life i mean you know work wise i had done like what 17 tournaments across the world traveled a bit you know when cricket the, commentary cricket you commentary perspective okay uh, covered the world cup went to do a lot of a lot of thing that never transcended into the social media world people don't know that i've done that right so now this year i've like no whatever i do i'm putting it on the gram and that's why that question was slightly from that perspective that do i go for the overkill when i put up content or people will be like wow he's doing a lot nice no i actually i'm i, I back raj on this cuz i i say this to myself all the time do i post this but i think there's so much content there's so much out yeah. there just publish it just just get it out there yeah and the thing about overkill is like when people say look i don't lift too much weights so i'll get too muscly but you are very aware of how much muscle you're growing months if not years in advance of hitting that you don't just wake up overnight True. and like you're like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 90s right like you realize on the way there that hang on this is an appropriate amount and if you want to plateau out you can do but here's the thing there are more and more people coming online there are bigger and bigger audiences so you just made a point there about cricket like this year there was a lot of hype about the world cup every year in the US there's a lot of hype around the um the super bowl hmm. these platforms and these meet these kinds of sports are vastly overshadowed by the number of people that watch cricket. Now what's really ironic here is that you are already a talent. The microphone that you're speaking into right now to speak to the whole of Dubai right. and the UAE is the same microphone that you could build the biggest cricket podcast up on. Plus you know what you're talking about. Plus you're in situation and you're going to these places. The situation you found yourself in is that you're like the cobbler who's got bad shoes. And we've all been there. All of us content creators that create content on a regular basis which means that we create content for others we make their shoes brilliant we look down at our own feet and their bare foot yeah and so this is something that you need to really grapple with and say okay look i'm going to do this now here's why it's important to do it in 2023 because with the emergence of chat gpt and ai and content becoming easier and easier to make i mean we're here in the studio right now we're shooting with iPhones okay the price of producing content's coming down and down and down and what i don't want for either of you or anybody listening is it for it to be like 2045 the year 2045 and we look back at this kind of like white hot opportunity of like from 1995 to 2035 where content was effectively almost free to make and definitely free to publish that we didn't take advantage of it so you've got to take advantage of it it's your responsibility to yourself and to your profession It's a great it's a great view and that's one of the things that you do with uh, the Creative Content Agency the website creativecontentagency.com. Uh, I've done one of your courses. Uh, talk to me about this idea because I love it the four Ps that you teach people. Yeah, so the four Ps is incredible. We we've all been there, any entrepreneur or anybody who's had to kind of like write up what they've done is that there was a period of time and it must have been over 10 years ago now where I was updating my website and I was looking at writing up all of my clients. And as I wrote up each of my clients and put all the case studies up there, I was like, hang on a second. For this client I did this, for this client I did this, and for this client I did this. And I was like, I basically did the same thing for all the clients. I was like, mm -hmm. well, what are the themes? Well, firstly, I planned their content, then we produced it, and then we published it online for them, and then we promoted it. I was like, hang on a second, they're all Ps. So, plan, produce, publish, promote. Now, whether you look at the the scratchings on the inside of the the pyramids of Egypt or you look at the metaverse, this logical path is how all successful content is produced. You have to plan it before you can produce it. It has to be produced before you can yeah. publish it online. Right. And it has to be published online before you can promote it and drag real people to to look at it, you know, to attract them with their phones or wherever they consume their content. So what we've come up with here is a universal strategy, a universal framework that if you follow these things and you consider these points that you will be able to produce great content. Now, the strategy is universal, but your your content journey that itself is a personal journey and where you start and what your strengths are that's ultimately down to you and to your point there neil this is where kind of we found ourselves stepping in today and evolving our offering is that we step in and meet you where you are so we start nice. off by giving you an assessment and saying okay what are your strengths and weaknesses as a content consumer and as a content creator we figure out of the four p's where do you really excel and where are your weak points and then we coach you from there upwards on the four p's of content and we we're, we're so proud of it because we've had it for so long it's worked whether we've worked you know we've we've done projects like my friends your friends which you've supported i really appreciate uh, but even right through to projects that we've done with Gary V Tony Robbins Stephen Bartlett Robin Sharma these whether it's big a list scale celebrities mm -hmm. or whether it's individual kind of freelancers and entrepreneurs it's worked for all of them this is amazing you know i mean to understand it at in an individual level because normally if you see you know uh, people who are trying to help 
content creators uh, most of these agencies and and I've, I've spoken to a few of them uh, you know trying to understand how it all works in in their business model or in their psyche is like all right yeah don't worry we'll take care of your content we'll publish it no you cannot publish my content because my content is my content is it, it, it it's it's the same two things right but how i think of it how i perceive what is my tonality uh, i i i i would rather have someone come to me speak to me tell me what has to be done and i'll do it instead of you know just just taking it off my shoulder and 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 you know publish like you said that you know there are a bunch of uh, apps available today to you know to bulk uh, publish uh, content for the whole year and and or to publish it 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 may not work for me but it could work for some businesses which are in that uh, generic concept yeah i mean the thing about auto publishing is a risky one hmm. because we live in a world today where anything can happen and something can hit the news cycle a person of importance could pass away yep. and all of a sudden you're promoting like hmm. a brunch meet up and that might not be a appropriate if not only if that brunch is cancelled because it's a uh, that's right. just the way that the city's gone but you know you want to make sure that you're matching the tone of your of your audience yeah. and your target customer so so that's one thing but i think another thing about this this whole this whole journey is that ultimately once you've done one loop mm -hmm. once you've recognized from an idea putting it out and then having that kind of like positive reinforcement it kind of auto spurs you to to do more and more and more and and to your point about you know when agencies say we'll do it we'll do it i don't worry at all mm -hmm. about who's going to hire us next okay. and i'm talking about from a list celebrities right through to somebody building a business in jumeirah i go into pitches not to get hired i go into pitches to get fired we present the day that they're going to fire us rather than the day they're going to hire us because we're not in the business of like locking ourselves into your company or mm -hmm. into your brand forever we're like look this is how much training you need and at this point whether it be 6 months if you're super talented or 9 months or 3 months if you're like exceptional when do you want to fire us because once we've shown you the four p's you should really be looking at hiring your own team or taking it on yourself or doubling down on what works and pulling away from what doesn't so that we can kind of get out the picture and go and service somebody and, else and, and i can back raj up on that because i jokingly said to him once uh, mm -hmm. you, you should be my manager and he goes nah you just need an assistant yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah and yeah. i actually thought no no he's pretty switched on here he knows exactly why because i, I guess in your training with the four p's of so many people I, it, the mind is the biggest issue now we had uh, someone who you've worked uh, very very closely we had spencer lodge came in He's got a great podcast about sales training, but a lot of that is those same values of why is it that some people get up at 5:30 in the morning to go running and why do some still stay in bed and hit the snooze button? Because it seems so hard with a lot of people you might have the best of idea, but why is there this blockage between having the ideas and having the content but not just able to hit go to to launch their content online? I think it's the perception of what happens next, right? What happens if I start? Now some people fear success and they worry about what it's going to be like if they are successful and who they might become because if you become successful or you become popular it's like when you become rich it's like a magnifying glass on you it will highlight everything that makes you great but it will also accentuate your flaws but the reason why people get paralyzed through decision making or procrastination is because number 1 they're not in tune with why it is that they're doing it in the first place and two it's a false perception of who it is that's going to be judging them on the other side of the screen mm. and when we yeah. think about how we are on the other side of the screen do you know how many hours hundreds of hours of effort that you scroll by when you're just flicking through Instagram or TikTok or anything like that right. like every single person that posted put in at least 5 minutes to maybe in some cases 5 months to make that video happen True. and we just scroll past it in fact sometimes when we're in a scrolling motion and we look away and we pick up a biscuit to put into our tea we don't even see that moment yeah. right yeah. so people fear the judgment of hang on a second every single thing i'm going to do is going to be interrogated down to the meg like the last pixel and here's one thing that the last 2 years to us we were all watching tv we were watching sky and other these big platforms and those folks on those tv channels were bringing in experts to speak about a range of subjects and those experts were coming in via zoom So we were watching people on TV in Zoom quality because people couldn't see each other one to one. Right. So quality doesn't matter, relevance matters. And once you've closed that relevance site that, that relevance loop where I put something out which I thought would be a value to this audience, it was a value, it brought something back for me, 
that thing then reinforced me to make more content, it then becomes a positive cycle. And the brain, the neuroplasticity of your brain starts to see opportunities for content every single day when you walk around. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly, it's, you, you're thinking about buying a red car, you see more red cars. You got it, you got it. So when you see content strategy through the lens of the four Ps, everything all of a sudden just starts to kind of demystify and become mm -hmm. a lot easier. And content just becomes just as easy as making your, making your dinner every day. Or you could just have lots of cats. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That would work. <laughs> Which is true. I mean, see, you know, Kitchen and I have been doing radio for such a long time. You know, we don't really need to bring out our books and pens and papers and write down scripts and ideas and concepts. The conversation goes on and we pick up topics and we start talking. This is content creation. But the same thing, if it has to be put on, say, Instagram or, or TikTok, we would be like, yeah, no, maybe. So what is the right thing as far as content is concerned like you said that there has to be a value that you add to content for the one who's watching how do I justify or how do I judge what is right what is wrong or do I just put it in and do a dipstick measurement yeah it's you're dating your audience in the initial mm -hmm. stages mm -hmm. you're putting out content and you know you don't realize whether people like you because you're handsome, funny, you're giving across high levels of high quality information that nobody else has, you're being really educational, you're being really entertaining, but you need to try a bunch of different things. So we look at the initial stages of your content journey in the four Ps, roughly in three stages. Mm -hmm. There's the piloting phase, okay. which is where you're trying to get content audience fit. So if you look at something like the first episode of The Simpsons or the first episodes of oh, Rachel horrible. and Ross. Yeah. They're horrible. The production quality is not great. That's normal. But also the big narratives like the the intense Ross and Rachel relationship and friends, yeah. that doesn't emerge until you know the yeah. seasons that follow. So you've got to let your trends emerge and that's yeah. a that's a back and forth dance with your audience. Because yeah, The Simpsons was about Bart and then eventually it became about Homer. You got it. You got it. So you might start your content about cricket, but eventually it could become about mental health for men or gut health or cars because you've got to have this dance with your audience and it is like mm -hmm. dating right like you, you go in there at first you kind of like you're really glossed up episode one episode three episode 15 you're, you're laying it down in a very nice formatted way and then over a period of time your content your podcast whatever it may be is just more of you hanging out in your boxer shorts right. on your couch watching Netflix which is episode 80 now the dating analogy works both ways mm -hmm. one of the biggest advantages when I've it, had in this business. When is the dating podcast starting? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I won't speak on any of those subjects. But like the the, the dating analogy works both ways. Uh -huh. So if there's ever been an advantage for me or any of my clients, like Spencer, who who's been one of our biggest successes, is that if you put out content, if you do then go and pursue an opportunity, when you walk into that room for that initial meeting, you're starting that opportunity meeting on the third or fourth date. Because typically what happens, think about when you go for an opportunity, you go for an interview or yeah. you right. go to do a deal. So who are you, what you do, what your strengths, what your weaknesses, features and benefits. But if that's already been communicated through your content, by the time you walk in, people know who you are. They've covered right. all the small talk, yeah. the ground one, yeah. ground two, like level one, level two stuff. You can get into a much more advanced conversation, which for business people in real terms, that lowers their like sales cycle, that lowers their deal cycle. And it all comes down to prejudice, which we think is a bad word, but it means to be prejudged. So when I came down here today, we didn't figure out what we we're going to talk about live True. on air. You know what my strength is. And so it's the same with you. Yeah, well, because we found out with our show when we first started it uh, nine, ten months ago, we thought we'd be talking uh, a lot about cricket, uh, business. But we really just talk about trying to get producer Pran to have a girlfriend. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, the, 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 there's a couple of ways to solve that. Yeah, yeah. we can. Look, if you want more details, we could talk to you all day because uh, I just find your stuff so inspirational. It's such an amazing story. Uh, it's the creativecontentagency.com. Of course, there's those new community courses uh, that are going to be available online to ask yourself, where are you in your content? Content journey, and I actually bet if you sit at the end of the bed uh, late at night and turn the lights, you'll probably be able to answer that question yourself somehow. Yeah, and yeah. then give us a shout, and we'll meet you where you are, not in bed, but we'll meet, <laughs> we'll meet you where you are in your content journey, and we'll take you from there. And you know, you'll, you'll be surprised. Again, it's like it's like the gym; it's like having a PT. You do it a few times, soon it becomes like a lifestyle change because right. content is like a lifestyle and then the, the benefits start to come in. So I'd encourage everyone to take action. Great advice. Raj from the Creative Content Agency, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.